How's it going guys? Getting ready to start a new project today and I uh, thought I'd take you along for this build project. So it's uh, about the end of November. It's getting cold so I've got snow on my mind. So I picked up yesterday this, uh, this is an old western snow plow. It was a Craigslist buy and actually the moldboard itself, actually this plow is in good shape. The steel is solid as you can see it's still got a lot of red paint on it actually a couple little little dents and dings but overall it's really in good shape um it's got everything intact as far as the frame the pivot um it's got the it's got the truck mount here he said it came off of an old ford truck and it worked when he took it off but it's been sitting back in the weeds for a long time so i don't really need um, this I just wanted the the blade and the actual frame and the pivot so the plan is I'm going to take this thing which this is a seven foot blade and I'm going to fit it on modify it to fit my uh, Kubota B2601 and what I've been using so for the past two winters I've been using this old uh, uh, rear scraper blade a six foot scraper blade which works okay i actually broke it last year and had to do a repair on it i made a video on that it seems to be holding together but um that works okay but because of um but i've got to back up all the time to run that blade my tractor's not heavy enough to be able to um to drive forward with a scraper blade so once you get some snow built up i get, I get too much weight there and i just start spinning I maybe mean, if i had chains i could do it but anyway i back up all the time which works fine but it's it's a real pain in the neck literally uh, to be looking behind you all the time i've got a pretty long driveway i think i've got about 250 feet of driveway up there and then down here in front of my shop i've got kind of a wide parking area so it's constant back and forth and back and forth so Anyway, I've been thinking about doing this. Buy, you can buy the Land Pride uh, front scraper blade or uh, front snow blades, but you know, like everything, they're overpriced. So I'm gonna make this work. This blade is clearly way too big for my tractor. So I'm probably gonna end up cutting it down. I'm definitely gonna cut down the frame. Um, you'll see, I'm gonna wall the plate on here and um, I may I may end up actually making this uh, the blade smaller. It's a seven foot blade. I think I probably really want it to be more like six feet. Um, so I make I'm gonna probably cut it down and then I'll see. It's really it's a lot taller than I need to. It's probably 30 inches tall or I don't know for sure how tall it is. I'll measure it, but it's pretty tall. So I may end up doing some cutting and actually. Uh, make it a little bit uh, lower too. Again, just take some weight off of this thing because the way it sits right now, it's going to be way too heavy for that little tractor. So, not exactly sure how I'm going to do this yet, but um, I'm going to get it unloaded, get it in the shop, and uh, start to kind of get my head wrapped around the best way to put this thing together. So, stay tuned. So, I have to say, this thing actually is not quite as heavy as I thought it was. Uh, I was able to pick it up. With the tractor out on the basically out on the tips of my uh, pallet forks, and those pallet forks are really heavy, and it picked up it picked up that blade no problem actually. So, um, not quite as much weight as I thought it was. So I suppose theoretically, although you start putting a load of snow in there, yeah, that tractor's not gonna handle that big blade. So I don't know. Anyway, just kind of a quick walk around. So like I said, the the blade itself is in good shape. Uh, seems like the the cutting blade is decent. It's probably been flipped, so the top side's probably shot, but it looks like the bottom side is good. So for the little bit that I'm gonna be doing on a gravel driveway, that'll last me forever. Um, it does have shoes on it, skid shoes or feet or whatever you wanna call them. It seems like some of, the, some of the ones I was seeing on Craigslist were missing those, so that's good. Um, it's got springs intact. They're not all stretched out or wrecked or anything. Um, the bad thing about this is I think both of these cylinders, well, I don't know, maybe this cylinder. So this is a, this is a Western plow. Um, I think this cylinder 
probably came off of a Myers plow, just kind of based on the yellow color. I don't know that for sure, but um, somebody put that on there at some point in time. Didn't quite fit right. Um, the pinholes are smaller on it, so they welded some washers on. Uh, apparently, this this kind of neck area is a little bit shorter than the than the proper cylinder, so it was making contact. So they just kind of notched that bracket out. Um, so not the right cylinder for that, um, but I'll see. I'll see if I can figure out if it works. This one, which I think is probably factory, unfortunately, um, a fitting was broke off. And this thing's been laying out in the weeds for who knows how long. And I looked inside there with a flashlight, and I can see that it's all gunked up and, and uh, crappy in there. So I uh, don't know about that one. That probably, I mean, I guess it's on the far end. It's on the top end of that cylinder. And actually, that, full, that cylinder is almost fully um, fully depressed. So who knows? Maybe it's it might be all marred up on the, on the end, but maybe it actually would still work with a new seal kit in. I don't know. Um, but I was poking around on the internet and I think maybe I might be able to find a set of cylinders for not too much money. Maybe I'll just go with brand new, the right ones to fit this. Um, I've got, uh, I don't think I mentioned, so I paid 250 bucks for the plow, um, which I think for what it is, is not a bad deal. Um, I can actually, I don't know about these cylinders. I may for now, I might just pull them off and maybe I'll just kind of do the, do the old manual um, angle and just drop a pin in. That's not my ultimate goal, but for a short-term solution, I can definitely do that. Um, Long-term or maybe even short-term, I may get a set of cylinders for this thing. That way I can run them off the third punch on my tractor and just have the full um, hydraulic uh, tilt on it or swivel or whatever you want to call it, which is really what I want. Um, I mentioned it's seven feet. Uh, pretty long for my tractor. I think six feet is probably about the max. So what I may do, these shoes, these shoe brackets here, the outs from the outside over to the outside, that's six feet. Um, so I may cut, I don't really want to have to relocate these shoes, although I guess actually that wouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, so I don't know, I'll see. I'll either, I think I'll probably either going to cut this down, take off six inches from e each side, right up to that bracket, or I may decide to go down even a hair less and go like 66 inches. Then I just have to cut those brackets loose and move them over. So I got to decide on that. Um, there's a couple, I did notice that there's a couple broken welds on this thing that I'm going to have to clean up and fix. Um, mentioned the cylinders. I've got to figure out how I'm going to, I'm going to get a, uh, a quick attach plate and my plan is to cut this frame off here. So I take this extra distance off. It's just extra, you know, further away from the tractor it is the heavier, heavier it is basically. So uh, I think I'm going to cut this off here. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to attach this to the attachment plates yet. I may go ahead and just cut these brackets off and reuse those. Um, this one over here is bent and that's three quarter inch stuff. So there's no way I'm gonna straighten that because I don't have a torch, but um, maybe I'll just weld it back on the crooked. Um, I don't know, I'm gonna decide for sure on that. I was going to originally, I was just going to weld this frame directly to the quick attach plate, but um, and then I was just going to, I was going to let the, the blade, I was going to put the tractor loader in float mode, but from the research that I've done, it sounds like doing that, uh, just with the weight of the frame of the loader and everything on it, people seem to have a lot of problems with this, you know, with these really uh, putting extra weight on the ground and digging into the gravel a lot. And it seems like people will have a lot more success if they leave everything so that it, so it actually pivots here. So if I leave a pivot, and then, I so what I was going to do is cut this off, weld this straight to the um, to the bracket that goes onto the loader, and then basically, um, and then weld another pipe down there. So I basically just would have everything rigid to the loader. But my thought now is probably going to keep it swivel. So I'll, I'll weld some brackets on to the plate so that I can run pins through here, and I'll probably just maintain a chain. Um, I don't know if that's that chain or if it's that one down there, probably this one. This will come up and get welded to a loop on the top of the quick attach plate.
And then by doing so, then I'll have full, um, then the, the blade will just be able to float along the ground like it was uh, really intended to be. Um, and I think I'll have better, better success doing that, especially my driveway is all nothing but hills and there's nothing flat or straight around here. So, um, so that's my plan. And then the other thing too that I'm contemplating, and I don't know if I really want to get into all this, but so this is, I think I had said before, it's like 30 inches. It's not quite that. It's from the, from the blade to the top, it's 25 inches. Um, and you know, obviously when it's made for a truck, it's, it's got kind of a, a big curl on there. So it's made to kind of roll the snow off at higher speed, but you know, on a little tractor just on a driveway, it's not like I'm going to have momentum enough to really be rolling a lot of snow. So, um, cutting that down is not going to hurt anything performance wise. And what it will do is take a lot of weight off of this thing and make it more manageable for my, for my little compact tractor. So, um, I can cut that, but by to do if I do that, the, the biggest pain is going to be that I'm going to have to relocate these um, these brackets that my springs, my trip springs, are mounted to. And so if I have to mount those, if I move those down, then I've got to move my brackets up there in further, so I can kind of keep a you know somewhat consistent distance to what I have now, because um, there's only so much that I can take those up. So. I've got to decide on that. It's going to be a lot more work if I take it down, but I really would like to have this thing probably be, you know, I don't know, maybe six inches shorter or something than what it is to make it more manageable and more light, you know, a lot lighter. So I've got a lot of work on this thing before I get it to, you know, what I, what I want it to be. But I think my first step is going to be, I'm going to get these cylinders off. I'm going to figure out how I'm going to get this frame cut off. I need to get one of those quick attach plates yet. I need to order one of those. Um, those are like a hundred bucks um, from Titan Attachments is the cheapest place that I found them. That'll be a 5 16th, a 5 16th um, thick plate. So it should be plenty strong for my tractor. Um, so I do need to get that ordered, but that'll be my first step. And then, uh, you know, if I get that done sooner rather than later, then at least if we do get some snow, um, I'll actually be able to put this thing on and be able to push some snow with it until I, you know, I can do all this other stuff later. So time to start doing some cutting, I guess. Okay. So I'll give you guys kind of an update on where I'm at so far. So I, um, did a couple things. I pulled the, I pulled the cylinders off. Um, I took the shoes off and um, determined these cylinders are definitely shot, both of them. They've got the one of them, um, the one that I thought might be decent, um, when I took the hose off, I had water running out of it. And this, this one that's actually um, the original one for the plow, that's got the broken off fitting, that one's just, it's shot too. They're all locked up. So, um, so anyway, I got those taken off of there. Um, I went ahead and I cut six inches off of each side, as you can see. And like I said before, I just took it right down to basically where the skids are so I don't have to move those. And um, so that, just taking that off, that little, you know, six inches off at each end doesn't sound like a lot, but um, getting it down to a six foot plow, now it actually looks like something that's gonna fit my tractor. So uh, that little bit makes quite a bit of difference actually. Now I'm gonna cut these, um, I'm gonna cut these ribs off of here and then I'll weld those back on here. So I'll grind this all up so it's smooth, but I'll grind, I'll weld those back on there. So that's um, kind of return to factory position. Um, I really, originally I was gonna cut this thing down too. I was gonna, I was gonna take it down um, I went back and forth. I was going to take it down to this line, and I thought I would just cut it down to the bottom of that angle iron there because it's really taller than I need. But uh, I've decided that I'm not going to do that for the little bit. I think it's probably going to save. If I cut this metal off of here, um, that little bit's going to save me like 20 pounds, which isn't really, which is a non issue. So, you know, if I was, um, you know, if I was building one from scratch, I guess I would want it, it wouldn't be that tall, but. For what this is, we're just gonna go with it. It's gonna be good enough. Um, so I need to get that done. Um, on these cylinders, there are kits that are available out there. I saw on eBay, I think for like 170 bucks I can get, no, actually that's not true. That's with that's with hoses and everything. I think for 170, you can get the two um, 10 inch stroke cylinders, plus fittings, plus hoses, but I don't know that the hoses are 
you know, because I'm hooking this to the tractor, really going to be the right size. So actually, I think it was $120. So I can get two of these 10 inch cylinders. So I'm going to go ahead and order those because I really would like this to be, you know, hydro have a hydraulic, um, you know, tw uh, swivel on it. Um, I thought about, so, so what I'm going to do with this, uh, with this hitch frame is I'm just going to cut this down from original length. and I'm going to cut it down to here, basically to where the, um, where the cylinder brackets are that's taken off about 14 inches, which, you know, that extra 14 inches, a lot of leverage hanging off the front of the tractor. Um, I, I went back and forth. I was really going to cut this thing down way, way down to here, which is another like 10 inches or so and make it as absolutely short as I could. But in order to do that, then I have to come up with new bracket locations for the cylinders and just trying to kind of figure out the, the geometry. I was having a hard time figuring out where I could mount those things um, to have it make sense. Plus if I make it that short, um, it's okay when it's in the upright position, but when it, when it, if it trips, it's going to come back and it could, there could be a risk of it hitting the, um, the quick attach plate and I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to cut it off here. It'd be way easier. I can just order those. It's actually cheaper to buy those, um, those 10 inch cylinders as a kit because they're, they're made for snow plows. So they're kind of readily available. So, so that'll be pretty easy. I did find a couple more, um, welds on here. If you can see there, it's cracked. Um, I think this same bracket on the bottom side is also cracked. So there's a few welds that I need to grind and, uh, re-weld on this, but, um, Oh, the other thing I was going to say too about cutting this down again, I'd, I'd really like to do that. But the main reason why I decided not to is in order to do that, I have to cut all these, all these, um, these bracing brackets. I have to cut all these free in here. And it's really difficult to do with an angle grinder, um, which is really the only way that I have to cut that. So it's way more hassle than it's worth and not have to relocate, um, my trip spring mounts because, um, and I'd have, they would, they would be at the very top of the blade and it's just, it wouldn't be worth it. So I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, I think that's going to work out just fine. So, uh, anyway, next step is we're going to go ahead and get this frame cut off. Uh, and, uh, then I'll figure out my mounting plate won't be here for a couple more days, but at least I can get that cut off. And then I may do some grinding and, uh, see if I can clean up some of the welds that are on there. Okay guys, update number two. My quick attach plate came in today. Um, I went with, this is, um, it's, it's 5 16 thick, and then it's got 3 8, three eight uh, ribbing around the outside, so that'll be plenty strong for my little tractor. Um, I got everything cut up. I've got, um, like I explained in the last video, I went ahead and cut the frame off, um, shortened that down, and what I'm gonna do, I've got a piece of, this is three inch by 3 8 angle iron, and that, that's going to get welded up on there like that um, and then I'll be able to weld on my brackets here oh yes Griff is so helpful <laughs> hey buddy <laughs> yeah the pups are helping me today like usual but anyway That'll get well, those will get welded on there like that. Um, and I'll probably do a little bit of reinforcing underneath there, but that, that th three by three eighths is gonna be plenty strong for my tractor. Um, did a bunch of cutting and hacking. These were, I don't know, some kind of extra like handhold brackets almost for mounting on a truck and I didn't need those. So those are gone. Um, this here, this bracket, because they put a cylinder on here that didn't fit before, they had to, chunk this out with a torch because the um, the hydraulic hose fitting was actually too close to the bracket so I just blew that out so I cut myself a little oh the dogs are so helpful cut myself a little chunk there that I'll weld in to fill that in hey buddy hey I know you gotta have some attention this is Griff and this is Maisie they're very helpful um, what else we got going on so the front of this um, so this mounts like this, so where the frame comes in and actually mounts to the frame section that, that actually mounts to the plow, kind of the main push, I guess. Um, there was, this is a weak spot here too, and I don't know what happened there. So um, this bolt, they had a bolt through there and it had a 
a castle nut um, welded on the bottom. So I had to grind, that's all that was left of that castle nut. I had to grind the entire thing off of there um, to get that out. So I made a reinforcement plate here, just out of quarter inch is what I had laying around, which should be plenty. So I got that on there. I'll get that all welded up on there real good. So, so that'll be reinforced on there. Um, I got my, and by the way, uh, this is just a public service announcement. So as I was grinding this off, and you can imagine gr trying to grind off, it's like a, I don't know, it's like a five eighths bolt or something with, um, with that nut on there. Shower of sparks. I had this, I'm working on a bike. This is, I'm going down a rabbit hole here. Going out, working on a bike here. Um, so I had that covered up, which is good. But I'd been um, actually doing some polishing on the motorcycle. And the spark show from over there, where I was grinding that bolt off, got over. And I don't know why, all of a sudden I looked up and I had a box of rags that was laying here. It was on fire. These are the rags that were in there. I had this pad was on the buffer. And I had <laughs> foaming pad dripping, uh, dripping all over the place. Um, that was filter, oil filter for the motorcycle. Anyway, I caught it quick. I caught it early, fortunately. But uh, be careful when you're grinding. The sparks are hot. I burned holes in my clothes before, but I've never actually started a fire. In any case, um, and then the other thing I got done, um, well, actually a couple other things. So because, again, nothing fit on this thing before, um, they had... There were a couple, couple of the cylinder holes. They had, uh, they were using three quarter inch um, pins, which is what was going on here. So I got all these ground off, so I can go back to a full one inch pin, which is what I need to fit the proper cylinder that's going on there. And then, last but not least, I got these brackets cut off of that six inch. And I tell you, that was probably of everything I did. That was the most pain pain in the butt to get done just because I really um, I had a plasma cutter I could blow those off there really easy but trying to cut those off and trying to get inside and all those angles and stuff trying to get those cut off there with an angle grinder it's a real bear but it's done so I am to the point now where I'm actually ready to start welding stuff back together and uh, I think maybe before I do that I might take this thing and just give it a real good power wash um, cause I think when I'm done, I want to throw a coat of, throw a coat of paint on it just to have it look as good as possible. Even though there's a lot of rust on it, I'll throw some good rusty primer over it and hit it with paint. Um, but anyway, there we go. That's the update. So, uh, next video we'll be doing some, uh, some welding and putting this thing back together.
Okay guys, time for a quick update on where we're at. I've got it uh, kind of mocked up there as you can see in front of the tractor and I think it looks really good. It's gonna, I think this is gonna work great actually. So, um, can't remember where I gave you my last, uh, my last update, but I got everything all welded up. Got my ribs welded on. Um, I got, um, I think I'd showed you before where I fixed that. Actually, there was a lot of slot back and forth in this thing when you picked it up before. And I, uh, Got this. Actually, I stopped at my dad's, and he, he's got a 20-ton press, and we just smashed that down a little bit so that fits a little bit tighter. Took some of that slop out. I also, before, um, so there's there's three pins that hold the blade to the actual frame, and the middle one is, you know, it's secured there, but the two side ones, I don't know how this, this thing has been kind of cobbled together. Um, this pin, the pins on the outside here were just basically f uh, kind of flopping around. It wasn't very tight. So I welded a bracket, that bracket there, as well as one over here to basically stiffen everything up. Now that, that took all that slop out of there, so that's a lot better. And then the biggest accomplishment is I got my, um, my actually mount uh, on there. And like I showed you before, I've got this three inch angle iron. I laid that over the top of the angle iron frame. I got that all welded in really good, and then I did. I wanted to. I wanted to stiffen this thing up. Um, you know, for my 26 horse tractor, I think it would have been fine. But I want. I wanted to engineer this so that it's strong enough that I ever put this in front of a bigger tractor. Um, it's going to be. Uh, you know, it's not going to bend. So, I took that. I took some chunks of that three inch angle, and um, and I welded those to the bottom here, and basically built a box. So. Um, now I've got the strength of this, and this is 3 8 so I've got the strength of the angle here, this box, and the box ties into the front of the angle, so I've got, um, there's a lot of structure there, and there's no way I'm ever going to bend that. I got my, um, my, I don't know what you want to call these, but my uh, mounting brackets welded onto the top of there. Now the only thing that I have to do yet for welding is I've got, um, I cut these two, or these four pieces here, um, I actually cut those out of angle iron. Um, and I'm going to get those welded onto my quick attach plate. And I'm just going to run a pin through there. And actually, I'll probably run a bolt through there because, you know, this will be permanent there. I just got these one inch pins that I've got it mocked up with. So I'm going to get these welded onto the quick attach. I need to, I'm going to cut this, um, I don't know what you call this, but basically this is where the chain hangs on the top. So when it was on the truck, you know, the cylinder would go up and uh, up and down and lift the plow with that little fork there. So that fork I'm going to cut off and I'm going to weld it up here to the top of my quick attach. And so then I'll be able to, um, you know, I'll be able to adjust the, the angle that this thing actually hangs down so I can find the right position that it works the best. So that's where I'm at. I'm going to do a little bit more welding here. I did actually wire brush all this too earlier. Got all, you know, most of the loose paint off it and kind of some of the rust. I've got some rust conversion um, primer that I'm going to hit this with and then um, we're going to put some paint on it too so it looks uh, looks snazzy when it's all done so there's my update let's do some welding and then the next step I'm going to be doing some painting All right, so here's where we're at so far. Might be kind of hard to tell with that sun, see with the sun, but I went ahead and um, got everything all put together. I went ahead and hit the 
frame with some rust transformer um, primer and I let that set up for a day and now I hit it with some uh, some semi-gloss black so that's painted up and ready to go now I've got some um, got some uh, Kubota orange which actually seems like it's about a perfect match to the actual Kubota orange so we're gonna paint the uh, the actual blade itself and then the quick attach plate I'm also gonna make Kubota orange because um, that's what I think I should do. And once I get that painted up, I got the cylinders in yesterday. So I wanna get a coat of paint on here, let this dry. And then as soon as it dries, it's gonna be time to mount up my cylinders and make this thing, uh, turn this into a finished product here. And I don't like the way that sprays. That's not bad. And I don't think I showed this on video. I took this hook, so this was the original hook that was on the um, the original truck plow. And I was originally I was just gonna weld this directly to the mounting plate, but um, this is 5 16 and I was a little bit worried about having all the way to that plow hanging and banging um, on one point here. So I just took a piece of angle iron. I think that's probably about you know eight or 10 inches, something like that. Welded that on the plate, and obviously, as you can see, welded the hook onto there. That way, it kind of spreads the weight a little bit, and I don't have to worry about this mounting plate, you know, eventually bending over time. So, anyway. I should mention, too, it's November 9th. Sorry, December. December 9th, and it's 55 degrees out today. Unbelievable for this time of the year in Iowa. In fact, I just got a new motorcycle and I took it for 30 mile jaunt today just to check it out and it's really nice. A little chilly for a motorcycle, but it's new, you gotta try it out. Okay guys, I want to give you an update where we're at. So um, I think last time I turned the camera on, I was I was painting, but as you can see, I've got everything painted. Turns Turned out pretty good. The old uh, Kubota orange effect going on. So I went ahead and as you can see, I got it mounted up to the tractor. Um, I did get the frame attached to the quick attach plate. Um, that's, uh, that's on there tight, that's on there permanently. I've got the cylinders just kind of mocked up on there right now. I don't have, those pins are just loose in there. Um, but I did have it up off the ground and you know, it looks like it swivels and everything nice. Um, I think everything's gonna turn out good. So basically the last step that I've got to do now, um, I do need to get springs tightened up. Those are just kind of thrown on there so, so that the plow wouldn't tip over. But uh, time to get the hydraulic lines all plumbed up hooked up to the tractor and hopefully here in the next uh, not too long I don't think this will take very long hopefully in the next 30 minutes I'll be able to give this thing a test run and see if it swivels so on these cylinders that I got and again these are made for um, basically made for a western snow plow but um, they've got two inlets and outlets on the cylinder here, one on the side, one on the top, depending on your application. So I've already gone ahead and tightened that up. And I'm using the little bit of hydraulic work that I've done before, which is just a couple of fittings for this tractor. I've never used this before, but this thread sealant, and uh, I don't know, they had it at the, they had it at Fleet Farm when I was buying all this other stuff. So I decided what the heck, can't hurt, go ahead and throw some thread sealant on there. So I got that. So I got the side plug sealed and tightened in on each cylinder and I'm gonna go ahead and use the top um, use the top plug. You can see I've got this one over here attached already and got the got the coupler on over there. I was actually thinking the one thing I was thinking about that I didn't do was I was actually thinking about making kind of a loop here just to keep the keep the hose in there and try to keep away from this kind of rubbing on the rubbing on there. But you know, as much as I use this thing, I don't think it's going to be a problem, so I'm not going to really worry about it. So go ahead and get the second hose hooked up, and I think we're going to be ready to fire this thing up and see how it works.
I don't know if I mentioned this earlier or not, but the timing on this couldn't have been better. So yesterday it was 60 degrees. I think it got up to like 60 or 61 degrees. I was teaching my son to ride a motorcycle. Beautiful day. Tonight, today it's, I think we have a high of 37. It's been raining all day. And tonight we're supposed to get between four and five inches of snow. So um, we'll get the chance to actually put this thing to a test tomorrow. So I've got to go, these are three eighths lines. It's a quarter inch inlet on the cylinder. So I'll go ahead and put a little bit of thread sealant on here. Attach our hydraulic line. So we've got a 3 8 line and my couplers um, on the tractor are actually half inch couplers. So I've got to do an adapter jump up from um, 3 8 up to the half inch to, to, um, to be the coupler size. So let's put this adapter on there. Uh oh, that's the wrong size. Okay, so that is super frustrating. I grabbed, what I need here is I need to go from a 3 8 um, I need to go from a 3 8 female to a half male to get to the proper coupler size. And I just grabbed, you know, I saw them, <clears throat> I saw them hanging on the shelf. I grabbed the one, I grabbed the one right behind it. But unfortunately, the one behind it is the wrong size. It's actually, it's a 3 8 male, but it's a quarter female. So, dang it. So that means I'm gonna have to run back to the store to get the right fitting to try this thing out, which is really annoying. But that's what I have to do, so that's what I'm gonna gotta do. I'll be back. Okay, guys, so 40 minutes later, I'm back with my $5 part that I need to finish this. So go ahead and put a little bit of sealant on here. We are getting really close to go time here.
All right. So, no time like the present. Let's hook this thing up. All right, looks like those hoses are in there at a pretty decent angle. That's where we ended up with. Eh, not perfect, but it'll work. So I don't even have, I guess I should pop a couple of pins. I've got some pins to stick in my, um, the pins that hold my cylinders. So I don't forget to do that. I've got a few things that I need to do yet, actually. I've got to tighten those springs yet. Um, and then I need to, uh, I've got to put my, my scraping edge on yet too. I haven't done that. So, um, and then I also have to put my, my shoes on. So I've got a couple odds and ends to do, but those shouldn't be too bad. The main thing is I just want to make sure that this thing, the hydraulics actually work. Those are tight. All right, my cylinders are pinned. I think it's time to fire this thing up and see how it works. perfectly. I was actually hoping it wouldn't be super fast and it's not. Got my third function control here. Top one is left, bottom one is right. Oh yeah. Well, I am really happy with that. Now the final test will be um, how heavy this thing is, how, how much it wants to kind of move the tractor around. You know, it's, it is a lot of weight hanging out there in the front of that little bit, that little tractor, but I think it's gonna be fine. I'll take it easy and I don't think it'll be a problem. Swivel's perfect. It's not, I didn't want it to be super fast and it's not. And that's, I think it was the right call of using the, you know, the original cylinders that are supposed to go on that plow. And it turns nice and smooth. No weird noises. Um, it's perfect. Works great. I'm really excited. I'm actually looking forward to some snow tonight so I can give it a try tomorrow. So um, we'll cut the video off here, guys. Appreciate you watching. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, I might, uh, maybe if I get a chance, maybe tomorrow, if we do in fact get some snow tonight, maybe I'll give you a shot of actually pushing it and we'll see how it goes in real life. But, um, but for now, again, appreciate you guys watching. As always, subscribe and hit the thumbs up on the video and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Well, the forecasters pretty well nailed it. We ended up with about four inches last night. Wet, wet, slushy, heavy, nasty snow. So <clears throat> this will definitely test out the plow. It's still come down a little bit, but it's pretty well stopped. So we'll, uh, I'm gonna set you up here and see how it works.
Well, I have to say the maiden voyage went great. <laughs> Worked perfect. Uh, only challenge I had was, as you can see, um, when I was pushing it, it's, you know, I think I told you the other day, it was like 60 degrees on Thursday, 37 yesterday, and then we got four or five inches of snow last night, so the ground isn't isn't at all frozen, and uh, it's a, kind of a sloppy mess, and I was pushing a lot more gravel around than I'd like. I hate that, because now I've got to clean it up in the spring, um, so if we get more snow, I'm, I'm going to, I'll probably drop these shoes down, maybe if it's soft again, <clears throat> give myself another you know, a half an inch or something of clearance. Um, but it works great. Super handy. The swivel works excellent. It's nice and smooth, very controllable. And I'm able to, I like to push the snow up off the driveway and kind of get it out of the yard because we've, you know, we back in and out of here a lot. And um, works really nice. I can get it pushed clear off off the driveway. Um, we got a little spot up there by the, next to the blue car that I kind of clear off for the dogs to, to go on, it works really well for that. So I'm pleased. Project, uh, successful project, I'd say. And now I got to test it a little bit. So now I'm fine with the snow going away, and hopefully we don't get any more for the rest of the winter. So anyway, guys, thanks a lot. Thanks for watching.